What's gaming gamers? Today, I've got a hunter build for you using the exotic arms armor Shards of Galanor that will allow you to spam your blade barrage super at a minimum of once every 30 seconds. But before we get into how that's done, I'd first like to shout out our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs. If you're looking for people to play any content in Destiny with, ranging from ritual playlist and seasonal activities all the way to raids and Grandmaster Strikes, feel free to join the Discord server. We welcome anyone, no matter how new or seasoned you are, and all of us will teach encounters if you don't know something. If you're interested, hop into the Discord server and play some Destiny with us. The link is in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me play some games more often, come hang out with me over on Twitch. I usually play whatever game I feel like over there, and I stream Destiny often. Furthermore, if you have any questions about builds or build crafting in general, I love answering those. If anything I've said has piqued your interest, the link to my Twitch is in the description as well. To get back into the build itself, I'll first describe the Shards of Galanor exotic arms armor and what it does, in case you're not aware. Shards of Galanor has the exotic perk Sharp Edges, which allows throwing knife final blows to grant between 2.5 and 5% super energy per kill depending on the tier of enemy killed. Furthermore, Sharp Edges causes hits and kills with your Blade Barrage Super to refund super energy based on the amount of enemies hit and killed, as well as the tier of enemies both hit and killed. Sharp Edges can refund up to a maximum of 50% of your Blade Barrage's energy. Now that you know what the Shards of Galanor Exotic Arms Armor does, I can get into the rest of the build, starting with the subclasses setup. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup, if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll detail what each subclass element does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. For the prescriptive subclass setup, run the Blade Barrage Super, the Gambler's Dodge, whichever jump you prefer, the Knife Trick Melee, the Healing Grenade, the Knock Him Down aspect, the On Your Mark aspect, Ember of Beams, Ember of Empyrean, Ember of Mercy, Ember of Searing, and Ember of Torches. To describe the subclass's elements in more detail, firstly, the Super. Blade Barrage is chosen as it's the Super that will be refunded energy via the Shards of Galanor Exotic Arms. Blade Barrage will throw two fans of seven knives each for a total volley of 14 thrown knives. The knives themselves will embed themselves into their target, and after 0.5 seconds of being embedded, will explode dealing further damage to the target they've embedded into. This explosion can and will kill you as well if you're too close to your Blade Barrage projectiles, so do be careful of that. Blade Barrage is a good PvE super, dealing with groups of adds incredibly effectively, as well as damaging bosses a respectable amount comparatively to other damage supers. Next, the Gambler's Dodge is chosen, as it will instantly refund your powered melee ability if you miss the target you are aiming at, or you otherwise don't kill the enemy you've thrown your knife at. Gambler's Dodge has a slightly longer base cooldown than the Marksman's Dodge, but Gambler's Dodge's powered melee refunding capability will be massively beneficial to this build's effectiveness, so Gambler's Dodge is a must-use with this build. As for your melee ability, I prefer the Knife Trick melee as I find it to be the most forgiving knife to use as it throws three knives in a horizontal cone shape, allowing you to be inaccurate when throwing the knife and still have the knife able to damage and kill enemies. You can use any of the other throwing knives if you want, but I'd personally advise against the weighted throwing knife, as that knife specifically has a slower throw rate than all of the other knives. Onto the grenade ability, the healing grenade is chosen as a source of both the cure buff to instantly heal you if you find yourself low on health, as well as the restoration buff which itself will be incredibly helpful for your survivability when using this build. This build requires you to be up close with enemies almost constantly, so having the healing potential of the healing grenade is paramount to this build's effectiveness in higher difficulty content. For the aspects, firstly, Knock Em Down will add three knives to each of the two knife volleys thrown by your Blade Barrage Super, which causes your Blade Barrage to throw a total of 20 knives instead of its default of 14. This increases its effective damage potential by almost 50%, as well as its ad clearing potential, as the more knives thrown, the more adds can be damaged by the super itself. Additionally, Knock Em Down will cause your powered melee final blows to fully recharge your powered melee ability, so long as the final blow is acquired while you have the Radiant buff procced. Activating Radiant from the same hit that killed the enemy will also refund your melee ability, which will be done every single time your melee ability damages a target due to the Ember of Torches fragment. Knock Em Down will be helpful for both of these reasons, but especially for your Blade Barrage, as the more knives you throw, 
the more likely you are to have the full 50% super energy refunded by Shards of Galanor. Next for Aspects, On Your Mark will cause Precision Final Blows to grant both you and nearby allies increases to both your weapon's handling and reload speed stats for 12 seconds. Every Precision Kill acquired while the buff is active will increase the amount of stacks you have up to a maximum of 3, as well as extending the buff's timer to its maximum of 12 seconds. Lastly, using your class ability will instantly grant you all three stacks of On Your Mark, but the class ability usage won't grant On Your Mark to your allies. While these weapon stat increases are helpful, and at three stacks are very noticeable, On Your Mark is brought mostly for its three fragment slots. The Gunpowder Gamble aspect is also an option if you'd like, but you would have to sacrifice a fragment, and I find this build makes significant use of all five fragment slots, thus I choose to use On Your Mark. As for those fragments, firstly, Ember of Beams will increase the tracking capabilities of your Blade Barrage projectiles, further increasing the likelihood of being refunded the maximum amount of super energy after having used your Blade Barrage. Additionally, Ember of Beams will increase your intellect stat by 10 points, but that isn't important for this build and is simply a slight increase to your Blade Barrage's passive recharge rate. The second fragment to bring is Ember of Empyrean. Ember of Empyrean will cause both your Solar Weapon and Ability Final Blows to increase the duration of your Radiant and Restoration buffs by a differing amount depending on the tier of enemy killed. Both the Radiant and Restoration buff can only be extended to a maximum on-screen timer of 15 seconds, but they can be extended to this 15 second duration indefinitely. 15 seconds is simply the maximum duration of the on-screen timer. Ember of Empyrean will be very helpful for this build for keeping your Restoration buff active for as long as possible, as having Restoration active will be imperative to this build's survivability and higher difficulty activities. Lastly, Ember of Empyrean does lower your Resilience stat by 10 points, which can be detrimental, but as you'll see shortly, this doesn't matter. Thirdly for Fragments is Ember of Mercy. Ember of Mercy was finally fixed in Update 7.3.5 and now functions properly. Ember of Mercy will grant you the Restoration times 1 buff for 2 seconds upon the collection of a Fire Sprite, and if you have the Restoration buff active at the time you collect the Fire Sprite, your buff will instead be extended by 2 seconds. Furthermore, if playing in a Fire Team, when you revive a Fire Team member, both you and that ally will be granted the Restoration times 1 buff for 5 seconds. Finally, Ember of Empyrean grants you 10 points to your Resilience stat, which entirely offsets the 10-point Resilience deficit caused by Ember of Empyrean. The fourth fragment, Ember of Searing, will cause the defeat of any Scorched target to grant you a differing percentage of melee energy depending on the tier of enemy killed. The amount of melee energy granted is also affected by the recent changes to ability tiers and scaling ability energy gains, so I won't go into specifics regarding exact percentages. However, the melee energy granted by Ember of Searing isn't really important for this build, especially as it takes advantage of the Gambler's Dodge. Instead, Ember of Searing will also cause the defeat of any Scorched target to create a Fire Sprite, which, upon collection, will grant you the Restoration times 1 buff thanks to the Ember of Mercy fragment. The Fire Sprite generation is the main reason this fragment is brought, and if you are to use Ember of Mercy, I am of the opinion that Ember of Searing is a must-pick fragment alongside it. Furthermore, Ember of Searing comes with a 10-point increase to your recovery stat, which admittedly isn't entirely necessary, but can be a nice bonus when you don't have the Restoration buff procced. Fifth and finally for Fragments is Ember of Solace. Ember of Solace will increase the duration of Radiant and Restoration buffs applied to you by 50%, which simply increases the allotted time you have to increase your buff's timers when you initially proc them. Ember of Solace is especially important for Ember of Mercy, as it will cause the collection of Fire Sprites to grant or increase your Restoration buff by 3 seconds per Fire Sprite picked up instead of 2, which can mean the difference between extending Restoration and not. Plus, with the 5 second cooldown between Fire Sprite generations, you have to manually increase your Restoration buff if you want to keep it active 100% of the time via Ember of Empyrean, and the 3 second duration from Ember of Solace makes that much easier to do. Ember of Solace does come with a 10-point deficit to your Discipline stat, but with the Restoration uptime and other healing options this build has, you shouldn't need those 10 points. With the subclass now entirely detailed, I can get into the rest of the build, starting with my recommendations for Seasonal Artifact mods if you're watching this video during Season 23, The Season of the Wish. 
The artifact mods to run with this build are pretty much the same as the ones to run with any solar build this season, so I'll detail those now. In the first column, simply run whichever anti-champion mods you need for the content you'll be running. I prefer having my primary ammo weapon without an anti-champ mod, as then it'll be granted anti-barrier rounds by the Radiant buff, but if you need the champ mod for your main weapon to be unstoppable or overload rounds, that's an option with the first column. In the second column, the Kindling Trigger mod will cause the Radiant buff to allow your solar weapons to apply Scorch stacks to any enemy damaged by those weapons who are also currently unafflicted by Scorch. This is a great source of proccing the Ember of Searing Fragment to be granted melee ability energy when killing Scorched enemies, which will be very helpful if you lose your Throwing Knife and also miss your Gambler's Dodge. In the third column, the Flint Striker mod will grant you the Radiant buff upon getting rapid precision hits and or multi-kills with solar weapons. This is simply an extra source of the Radiant buff, and in combination with Ember of Empyrean will cause you to effectively never lose Radiant so long as you're in combat. Next in the third column is the Torch mod. Torch will grant all of your weapons a slight 5% damage boost to any enemy afflicted with any Stasis or Strand debuffs provided you have the Radiant buff procced. Stasis and Strand debuffs include Slow, Freeze, Sever, Suspend, and Unravel, most of which can be procced with specific weaponry, so Torch is a great passive utility mod for increasing your weapon damage against bosses especially. Next for the third column, the Heart of the Flame mod will grant you and nearby allies the Radiant buff for 10 seconds upon the casting of your Solar Super. Furthermore, Heart of the Flame grants your Solar Super a damage boost upon its cast with nearby allies increasing the strength of the damage boost. This super damage boost does work while solo and is a free 6% damage boost while solo to your Solar Super. Lastly for the third column is the Wished Into Being mod. Wished Into Being will cause ability final blows when above a certain threshold of super energy but not fully charged to summon three orbs of power. Wearing Season of the Wish armor lowers the super energy threshold to summon these orbs of power, but I don't find that to be worthwhile overrunning armor you already have and use. With zero or one piece of Wish armor equipped, you must be between 80% and 100% super energy to have these orbs of power summoned, and the cooldown between summoning these orbs of power is quite long. In the fourth column, the Revitalizing Blast mod will simply cause damage dealt with your solar abilities to bosses and champions to apply the Void Weaken effect to those enemies for 6 seconds. This allows you to deal 15% more damage to those enemies for the 6 second duration, which can be significant especially for high damage sources like your Blade Barrage Super or your Heavy Weapon. Lastly, for the fifth column, the Rays of Precision mod will grant Precision Final Blows while Radiant the ability to cause the target killed to ignite, dealing significant damage to all enemies nearby to the one killed. This can be a fantastic utility for clearing groups of adds quickly, but can also be detrimental if you kill an enemy and then throw your knife at the next enemy, only for them to be killed by the ignition you caused on the first enemy. As this is the case, ensure you're paying attention when you have this mod equipped to whether you've precision killed an enemy with your throwing knife. With the artifacts mod setup now detailed, I'll get into the armor setup for this build. The first thing I'll do is describe my recommendations for stat distribution, and then I'll go over the armor's mod setup. For the armor mods, I'll put everything on screen first as a prescriptive setup, if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll detail the armor's mod setup, describing what each mod does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. For stat distribution, in the top three stat grouping of mobility, resilience, and recovery, spec into resilience first, with recovery and mobility second in priority. Resilience is always the most important stat to spec into, regardless of class and build, as it dictates your overall health, shields, and damage resistance. That makes having a high resilience stat imperative to survivability, especially on Solar, as Solar doesn't have any implicit damage resistance tools like most other subclasses do. As for mobility and recovery, both of these stats are just as important as the other for this build. Recovery is arguably more important, but this build will also have the Restoration x 1 buff active consistently, so you won't need as high a recovery stat as you might on another subclass. Mobility is the Hunter's class stat, which means you'll need at least a few points specced into it to ensure your Gambler's Dodge doesn't have an absurdly long cooldown. As this build doesn't take advantage of the Ember of Singeing Fragment, you'll have to wait for your Gambler's Dodge to fully recharge on its own before being able to use it again, further increasing the mobility stat requirement. 
For the bottom three stat grouping of Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, Discipline will be the most important stat to spec into, with Strength second, and Intellect can be ignored altogether. Discipline governs the base recharge rate of your grenade, and having your healing grenade off cooldown more often helps significantly with both your burst healing potential, as well as your restoration times one proccing capabilities. Intellect is an entirely useless stat for this build. All Intellect does is reduce the base cooldown of your super. That may sound appealing, but everything that grants you super energy does so via a percentage, thus entirely removing the benefit of specking into Intellect. Still, having at least Tier 3 Intellect will have your super at its base cooldown. Any less than Tier 3 and your super's base cooldown will be longer than its default. Lastly, Strength dictates the base recharge rate of your melee ability. This is less important than Discipline, with this build's active melee regenerating capabilities in both the Ember of Searing Fragment and the Gambler's Dodge. But if you aren't in a position to be able to kill Scorched enemies or use your dodge near them, having a higher strength stat will cause your melee ability to be off cooldown more often, allowing you to use it more often. My armor stats have me at 50 mobility, 100 resilience, 71 recovery, 64 discipline, 50 intellect, and 50 strength. With stat distribution now detailed, I can get into the armor's mod setup for this build, starting with the prescriptive setup. I'll put everything on screen first if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll detail what each mod does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. For the prescriptive armor mod setup, on your helmet, run one harmonic siphon mod and two hands-on mods. On your arms, run three heavy-handed mods. On your chest piece, simply run whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. On your legs, run one absolution mod, one innervation mod, and one recuperation mod. Lastly, on your cloak, run one bomber mod and two utility kickstart mods. To detail the armor's mods, firstly, the helmet's mods. The harmonic siphon mod will cause multi-kills with your solar weapons to summon an orb of power, which will grant you super energy, ability energy, and health upon its collection. Orbs of Power will be very helpful for this build, mostly for survivability in the form of the Recuperation mod, as that mod will act as a form of burst healing that'll be incredibly useful for this build when in close proximity to enemies. The two hands-on mods will serve to grant you even more super energy upon getting kills with your powered melee ability, in addition to the super energy already granted by Shards of Galanor. If you want, you could swap out one of the hands-on mods in favor of a heavy ammo finder mod, but ability kills don't progress the ammo finder counter, and as this build will be getting mostly ability kills anyways, I don't find that to be entirely necessary, but the option is there should you decide to take it. For the mods on your arms, running three heavy-handed mods is highly recommended for the Orb of Power uptime. With the now not-so-recent changes to the heavy-handed mod, there's now a cooldown between orb generations after having gotten kills with your melee ability. With one heavy-handed mod, that cooldown is 10 seconds. With two heavy-handed mods, that cooldown is 5 seconds. And with three heavy-handed mods, that cooldown is lower to only one second between Orb of Power generations. Furthermore, having more mods equipped increases the potency of the orb generated, meaning it'll grant you more super energy upon its pickup. Having this one second cooldown between orb generations is effectively mandatory, as the orb generated will grant you health via the recuperation mod on your legs, and that healing will be very important as you push higher difficulties with this build. Onto your chest piece, simply running whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running will suffice. I generally find myself running one Arc, Solar, and Void resistance mod each, but if the activity I'm playing has a threat modifier, I will run two of whatever resistance mod corresponds with the threat modifier, along with either a Concussive Dampener or another element's resistance mod. For the Legs mods, firstly, the Absolution mod will grant you a small amount of ability energy for all three of your abilities upon the collection of any Orb of Power with no cooldown. This mod is simply brought as a small passive boost to the uptime of your abilities, and with this build's orb of power generating capabilities, you'll be granted this ability energy often. Next, in addition to the Absolution mod, the Innervation mod will grant you grenade energy upon the collection of any orb of power with no cooldown. The amount of energy granted by Innervation is additive to the amount granted by Absolution, and those two mods together will grant you more grenade energy per orb collected than two Innervation or two Absolution mods together would, which is why I choose to run this combination of mods. Lastly, the Recuperation mod, arguably the most important mod to run for this build, will grant you 67 health upon the collection of any orb of power with no cooldown. This ensures you stay healthy while in close proximity to enemies, which you will be often as this is a melee-oriented build. 
Lastly, for your Cloaks mods, the two Utility Kickstart mods together will serve to refund you class ability energy upon the use of your class ability, so long as you have stacks of armor charge when you use your class ability. Utility Kickstart doesn't work without any stacks of armor charge, but with this build's Orb of Power generation and collection capabilities, you'll be consistently at 3 stacks of armor charge. Having Utility Kickstart mods equipped also allows you to collect Orbs of Power while your super is full, meaning you can still use Absolution, Innervation, Recuperation, and Utility Kickstart itself while your Blade Barrage is fully charged. Alternatively, instead of running two Utility Kickstart mods, you can run a Powerful Attraction mod alongside the one Utility Kickstart mod. Powerful Attraction will automatically collect any Orbs of Power nearby to you upon the use of your class ability, which you will be using somewhat often to refund your melee ability. With the armor setup now entirely detailed, I can get into some weapon and weapon perk recommendations I have for use with this build. I'll start with the kinetic slot, then move to the energy slot, and finally I'll detail some heavy slot weapons I recommend using with this build. For the kinetic slot, I recommend running a special ammo weapon in this slot, as any special weapon you run will make short work of majors, champions, and mini-bosses. Fusion rifles and shotguns would be my main recommendations, as this build will have you in close quarters with enemies consistently. As that's the case, snipers and trace rifles won't have the same effectiveness as fusions and shotguns will. As for specific kinetic slot weapons I recommend, there are the Riptide Stasis Fusion Rifle from the Crucible Weapon Pool, with the perk combination of Auto Loading Holster and Chill Clip, the Scatter Signal Strand Fusion Rifle from the Season of the Wish with the perk combination of Controlled Burst and Slice, the Sword Breaker Strand Shotgun from the Crota's End Raid with the perk combination of 1-2 Punch and Pugilist, and the Wastelander M5 Kinetic Shotgun from Dares of Eternity with the perk combination of Pugilist and Trench Barrel. Onto the energy slot, I recommend a primary ammo solar weapon in this slot, as that'll synergize with this build the best, as well as having infinite ammo, so you don't need to farm special ammo to have a weapon synergize with your build. As this is a close range build, weapons like submachine guns and hand cannons work best, but there are plenty of options for specific weapons to run. Specific weapons in the energy slot I'd recommend you use are the Bug Out Bag Solar Submachine Gun from the Season of the Deep, with the perk combination of Incandescent and Threat Detector, the BXR-55 Battler Solar Pulse Rifle from Dares of Eternity with the perk combination of Incandescent and Pugilist, the Callus Mini Tool Solar Submachine Gun from the Season of the Haunted, now acquirable via the Presage Exotic Mission with the role of Incandescent and Threat Detector, and the Zowley's Bane Solar Hand Cannon from the King's Fall Raid with the perk combination of Explosive Payload and Incandescent. For your heavy slot, as this build doesn't take advantage of any solar weapon surge mods, you can really use whatever heavy weapon you want. I find myself using an exotic in this slot most of the time, but I'll go over exotics shortly. Legendary heavy weapons I recommend using with this build include the Apex Predator Solar Rocket Launcher from the Last Wish Raid with the perk combination of Bait and Switch and Reconstruction, the Ascendancy Solar Rocket Launcher from the Season of the Lost, now purchasable from the Monument to Lost Lights in the Tower, with the perk combination of Explosive Light and Impulse Amplifier, the Cold Comfort Stasis Rocket Launcher from the Ghosts of the Deep Dungeon, with the perk combination of Bait and Switch and Envious Assassin, and the semi autitian Strand Rocket Launcher from the Season of the Witch, with the perk combination of Explosive Light and Impulse Amplifier. As far as exotic weapons go, there are plenty of options. The Kinetic Slot has weapons like the Bastion Kinetic Fusion Rifle and the Conditional Finality Stasis and Solar Shotgun. The Energy Slot has weapons like the Sunshot Solar Hand Cannon and the Vex Mythoclast Solar Fusion Rifle. And the Heavy Slot has my personal favorite exotic weapon to run with this build, the Dragon's Breath Solar Rocket Launcher. I like Dragon's Breath the most as it's a very set and forget exotic. I can shoot it once at a mini-boss or boss and go right back to clearing adds or majors in the arena while Dragon's Breath does the damage on the boss by itself. Then, once I've procced enough ignitions, Dragon's Breath reloads itself and I can shoot it at the boss again, only to then go right back to clearing adds. Any of the exotics I've just mentioned will work fantastically with this build, however, so use all of them and see which one suits you the most. With the rest of the build now detailed, I can get into a few playstyle tips and tricks for use with this build. Firstly, generate and collect as many orbs of power as you can. They'll keep you alive and keep your abilities charged on top of granting you armor charge for use with your utility kickstart mods. If you lose your melee ability, use your gambler's dodge to have it instantly refunded, and if you lose your melee ability while you don't have your gambler's dodge off cooldown, 
kill scorched targets to grant yourself melee ability energy to get right back to killing enemies with it. This build revolves entirely around using your powered melee. Your weaponry is secondary to your powered melee, and this build is designed around that specifically. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Again, if you'd like to join our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs, the link to the Discord server is in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me stream some games sometime, come hang out with me over on Twitch. The link for that is also in the description. If you have any questions or constructive criticisms, please leave them in the comments. I read all of them and reply to all that I can. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day!